The following is an abridged English language translation of Bishop Georg Batzing's pastoral letter for this Lent, the Denke Mensch, Social Challenges and Christian Humanity. What is a human? The readings today, the first Sunday of Lent, bring this question into sharp focus. The biblical story of the fall of humankind in Genesis, the connection between sin and death in the letter to the Romans, and the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness in Matthew. They all raise the question of what makes a human being. This question drives theology, philosophy, natural science, art, and politics. It guides all of society's debates and decisions, particularly those concerning the beginning and end of life. Everyone deals at some point with the issue of what makes a human being, whether it's during a crisis, a major decision, or just a situation we need to deal with every day. It's particularly important when people's worth is damaged, exploited, or marginalized. Human nature is defined by our relationships with God and other people. From the very beginning of our lives, we are dependent on and tied to others. Only in relationships can the things that make me unique be determined. The I develops in dialogue with the you, as the Jewish philosopher Martin Buber put it. We are responsible for our role as beings existing through relationships. Responsibility is a vital attribute of our ties to others. That's implied in the German Gottes Ebenbildlichkeit, the knowledge of good and evil in the biblical creation story of the tree of knowledge. The lesson is this. My decisions have consequences for other people. And so today, we find ourselves in structures whose outcomes we never thought we'd be the cause of. Sin, which St. Paul interpreted as meaning death, is the counterpoint to God's grace, which came into the world through Christ Jesus. Therefore, with our actions, we're not solely dependent on ourselves, but can hope for his help and justice. God's love, our love for ourselves, and our love for our neighbors are all inseparable. This especially propels those who help others with a sense of solidarity, compassion, empathy, and engagement, whatever their other motivations. In the absence of those conditions, we see the clear cruelty, not only of history, but also of the present. Consider the destructive Russian war on Ukraine in Europe and many other brutal conflicts worldwide, and the people who are killed, tortured, injured, abandoned, and traumatized. Even in the church over decades, children and youths who most needed protection were violated, with deeds of abuse covered up, the perpetrators hidden, the victims ignored. The egotistical driving, striving for power success, glory, and riches doesn't just divide us from each other, it also severs us from creation. A long recognized result of our unsustainable behavior is global warming. We sometimes forget we need nature, but nature doesn't need us. Sometimes it seems as if we're in the front row of a cinema watching our own disaster movie of global collapse in which we aren't just ruining the world, but our very selves. Here's some examples of the scenes of horror that have driven 80 million people from their homes in recent years. War in Europe and other global conflicts over land, material resources and power. People threatened with torture and death simply for street protests to demand their dignity, as is happening in Iran or Afghanistan. Devastating droughts, uncontrollable forest fires, widespread famines, hurricanes and floods, worldwide pandemics. We've witnessed this here in Germany. The recent terrible flooding of the Ahr and Erft rivers was apparently partly a result of climate change. We can start right now to behave responsibly. We've had enough of passive observers, conspiracy theorists, the ignorant, cynics, the indifferent. What's needed now are sustainable answers to current challenges. 
In addition to technical solutions, there's a need for a turnaround that begins with us. The progress kill killing cliche, we've always done it that way, becomes increasingly and self-evidently absurd once we acknowledge that we're being led astray by the course that we always take. Ultimately, we need to pay the bill for the deeds that brought us prosperity. Our 40 days of Lent put us face to face with these challenges, the way Jesus spent 40 days in the desert. I've often marveled at how appropriate for our times are the ancient church rules. Take our fasting with abstention from meat on certain days and every Friday. It raises the questions, what's really needed? What do we depend too much on? The old question, what is human, shifts, in my view, into the question, what sort of human do I want to be? I use this perspective to consider new possibilities and also new limits. Together, we can bring many things to fruition. We've experienced it ourselves in 2015 and 16, and again in February of last year. An impressive solidarity with people fleeing from Africa, the Middle East, and Ukraine. Numerous neighborhood-based aid efforts displayed the major engagement of so many volunteers, not just those of us in the charitable field, but across society. The wide range of being there for each other extends far beyond the local neighborhood. I myself experienced this more and more in my visits across the diocese and throughout Germany. What kind of person do I want to be? The passion according to St. John, which will be read on Good Friday, makes this issue concrete. Pontius Pilate shows Jesus to the mob after his scourging with the call, see the man. Indeed, Jesus has shown us what being human means, often in ways that were far different from the usual images of the upstanding members of society. That's the challenge for everyone who seeks to follow Jesus. What does he show us about being human? A few years ago, we used to see young people wearing bracelets with the German equivalent of the American abbreviation WWJD. What would Jesus do? Perhaps it's just a new Christian form of the old question, what is human? We can only really look at this question together with others through prayer, prayer, listening to the word of God, and taking part in conversations and actions. We're therefore not doing these alone. So in closing, I wish you a good path toward successfully being human during this Lent, with many stimulating ideas, and a prayer for God's blessing upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your Bishop, Georg Betzing in Limburg.